we can discuss it. Uh, it's um, what is it? Monday afternoon today, eh? Yes. It's, it's the fourth of July, Independence Day. As I said this morning, the aliens will arrive today. Oh yes. Because any Independence Day movie you watch, you know, it's like yeah, the aliens right. come on the fourth of July. Yeah. They might so, already be here. Yes, they might already be here. So we're doing a bit of uh, role play, uh, troubleshooting, etc. And um, Andres is here, and his question was. Um, he signs people up and, and then he can't get the FICA documents from them. So I want to cover again the two reasons why people won't buy from you. And it's really simple. There's only two reasons why people won't uh, buy from you. The first one is they can't afford it. And the second one is... Um, Poor presentation. Those are the only two reasons why people won't buy from you. It's nothing else. Everything that happens is going to fit into one of those two categories. So you've got to be honest with yourself. You've got to make an assessment when, uh, when you get uh, problems with people not wanting to commit. You've got to make the assessment and say, was my presentation poor? Or can I say that genuinely these people can't afford it? That's the judgment you've got to make. If they can't afford it, and from what you're saying and the feedback that I'm getting from Andres is you were with them, you did a great presentation, they signed up, um, maybe they didn't know how to say no, they kind of gave you some stuff and they committed, and then you started struggling getting the paperwork. Yeah. So it sounds as if it was genuine an affordability problem it could be but I'm going to tell you now that two of them were pre-approved by CTI already so they were they were approved for the financing but yeah. still I couldn't get the documents from them yeah, and I think so, the so, guy with the credit card had more enough available on the yeah he's got well, more than so enough money so are enough. you saying that you feel maybe you worried that there was something there are things in your presentation that you're not doing I think with the credit card guy, I think it might have been part of the presentation. With the two CTIs, it's a 50-50 for me. Um, the reason is, I think I did a proper presentation, but I still get half of the documents, and I don't get everything at the end of it. So, so I, I need to know where I can get everything. That's, all, that, that's what I want to know. I, I want all the documents. But I want, I want it there and then. Not, I'll send it to you via mail or whatever. Can I just uh, say, Andres get that. Yaku gets a consult spouse. Or I think they both more or less get the, get the same feedback, but Andres pushes harder. So he gets a sign enrollment. Yaku gets the, I want to sort out my finances. I want to speak to my wife. I want to speak to someone. Okay. Now, can I, uh, can I give you then a strange answer of... <coughs> what we do I, I want to talk about the concept of what we do I'm sure some of you have heard the story before but I, I'm going to rehash it because there are people who haven't heard it and say, you can't remember what happened yesterday you know so you forget what we do um, really Louis you won't believe it I train salespeople this week Next week, I've got to tell them the same story because their memory is not long enough to remember for a week. So, what we actually do in the sales presentation that I've designed <coughs> is it's all about making a comparison. And after I've made a comparison, yep. making people choose. If you understand what I'm explaining to you now, I'm going to draw a line here in the middle. My sales presentation is about making a comparison. And then making, and my close is making people choose. The whole sales presentation that we have, we talk to people at, let's see what is your before picture and let's compare it to your after picture. What is the situation you are in now? And what is the situation that you can have? 
That's what the whole sales presentation is about. So I'm actually going to pitch this to, I'm going to use Andres as my client. As you can see, I'm not using my four quadrants and my grid and this and that and whatever like I normally do in a presentation. So I'm just going to do these two parts so that you can see the comparison. Are you ready? Can I go for it? Okay. So Andres, you and I spoke a bit about uh, what you do with your money right now. Yeah. And um, if I refer back to my five questions, question three, you said to me, your, your money, you're getting 12% per annum. Yes. Is that right? Yes. So I want to show you something interesting. Critical, and I'm actually making the comment because I'm watching what Andres is uh, writing on his piece of paper. Please don't screw up the following. If you're talking about percents, don't neglect to leave the per annums out. Okay. Can you see there what he did? He wrote 12%. Mm. That's not... <laughs> What we're talking about. Is it per day? Is it per week? Is it per yeah, month? It's very important to have it. It is critically important to attend to the finer detail. Okay. Every time I write a percent, I've got to indicate for what period is that percentage that I'm going to get. You all with me? Okay. So what I'm going to do here, Andre, so I'm going to do an exercise. I want to take 5,000 rand. And I'm going to invest this money at... 12% per annum. Okay. Now, I want to explain to you why I use 5,000 Rand, because a lot of people don't know why we use 5,000 Rand. <coughs> the first thing is, and I'm, I'll write it in, in, in red, it's, it's not too much money. Most people can get it together. The second thing, it's an easy, number. It's an easy calculation. So that's number one. Not too much money. Number two, it's easy calculation. And number three... It's minimum trading account. Yes. Thank you very much. There's a person that knows what he's doing. Uh, I want to compare 5,000 Rand in the bank with 5,000 Rand in a trading account. Okay. Because when you open a trading account with us, your initial deposits got to be 5,000 Rand or more okay. to activate your trading account. You can put any amount after that as often as you like, but to open your trading account and activate it, you've got 5,000 rand. You can't open a trading account <coughs> with 4,999 rand. <laughs> yes, of course. When you do your first trade, if you lose 50 rand and it's now worth 4,950 rand, it's no problem. Okay. So, Andres, what I want to do, I'm going to uh, ask for your help. Okay. Please, do you have a calculator? Will you take it out and help me with the calculations? Yeah, you have to break your cell phone. Yeah, I can pause. I might not get to get back onto the recording. We had a off a recording discussion about very interesting things that you people who watch the video will never know. So, Andres, what I want you to do is I, I need your help. Yes. Please put 5,000 rand into your calculator. Done. Okay, now add 12% for me. How much do I have? 5,600. Okay. Let me stop there for a moment. I'm going to ask you five questions. You ready for it? Yes. The first question that I have for you is, how much profit did you make? 600 rand. 600 bucks. My second question is, <coughs> How long did it take you? It took me 12 months. 12 months. <coughs> what did you start with? 5,000. All right, a guy like you. And what can you do with uh, 600 bucks if you've waited a year for it? Nothing. Okay. I want to particularly ask you, I understand your answer is nothing, but give me something practical. Okay, it's a, it's a tank of fuel. I, I can not even fill my car, but let's say I can use 600 bucks for fuel. That'll be about a day's worth of traveling. Okay. <laughs> your. So here's my question. Are you excited about putting 5,000 rand away, waiting one whole year, to get enough money to almost fill the tank of your car Not with petrol. Remotely, no. 
So is it worth it? No, no. Can I ask you a quick question? Yes. Um, I ask them the four questions, and then I say to them, before I ask you my fifth question, let me show you something interesting, and I show them what it is per day. And then I say to them, so is that worth it for you? And then they go, no. Okay. Is it is it different, or should I follow it like that? Or I'd like you to follow it like this. Okay. I'll tell you why. It's a very good question that he asked. At this point in time, I haven't even shown him how much is he making a day. If I get him up front to already commit, no, it's not worth it. Okay. <laughs> the further down the line we get, when we get to the point where the guy says, oh, I'm making 82 cents a day or whatever the case might be, it's totally screwed by that time. So, let me take a moment out of this presentation. Are you ready for it? Every single person that we meet when we go out there have some or a combination of the mainstream things that people can do with their money. They have limited choices. So let me educate you on limited choices and then I'm going to come there. I'm now going to write the word limited choices. Of what people can do with money. Now, this is so simple, but I don't think any of you have ever looked at it in the way I'm going to discuss it with you right now. All right, you've got money. Give me all the things you can do with the money to make this money grow for you. Investors. Where? In banks. Okay, so you can go to the bank. Okay, where else? Depends on how much you have. In property, yes, money market. Okay, you can go to property. Policies. So, so and policies. Yeah. So, I just want to go back. Someone said, uh, Louis said, money market. So, at the bank, what are the places that that you can use at a bank to put your money? Savings account. A savings account. Investment portfolio, which could be that thirty-day savings account. Thirty-two day call account. Yeah, and credit card. Get more interest there. Okay. Uh, let's and say. Let's say you can put your money in your credit card. What else? Tax-free saving. Yeah, that tax-free saving with 30,000 rand, um, you can do tax-free saving. Okay. You can do in a five-year agreement endowment. Uh, okay, that's part of policies, am I right? Uh, yeah, I guess. You can do an endowment or you can do what? Unit trust. Uh, unit trust uh, yes. or a retirement annuity. Yeah. Yeah. Or, um, yeah, there's a retirement annuity. Is the same thing as an RA. No. Um, no, hold on one sec for me. <laughs> so party, there's endowment policies, there's unit trust, there's retirement annuities. What else is there, people? Bank property policies, what else? Okay, yeah, there we are. Uh, I'm going to put a pension fund if you work for the company. Uh, then they contribute to a pension fund, which is in many ways like an RA, a retirement annuity. Or a provident fund. Yeah, or a provident fund, pension provident fund. What else is there? Um, stock market. Okay, you can go to a stock fell. Um, you can go to a pyramid scheme. Uh, can I make a statement? Yes, sure. We've run out of options of things for people <laughs> that they can do with their money. Well, what else is there? Okay, they can they can do a gold coin investment. Am I right? They can go to um, how will I term it? They can buy vintage cars or gold coins or some stuff like that. Uh, art. So let me talk about that. Art, gold coins, um, um, uh, a stamp collection. <laughs> Um, antique, antique stuff. How many people do that? So, so, so uh, 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 yeah, that's part of art. So, Joe Soap, the person that we present to, are these the options that no. any of you ever done a presentation where someone no. comes up with this? No. Sometimes gold. Yes. Sometimes gold. Yeah, but that's more in, in, yeah. in commodities. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you've got some Kruger Rands. Okay, but and and shares like MTN and Sasol use their platform. So are you saying that BE shares people come up with? Yes. Okay, but the point that I want to make 
And please, yeah. before we 